If you ever needed any more proof that the US government doesn't care about humanity, China just cured type 2 diabetes for the first time ever, and the US government is trying to pass legislation that would prevent US scientists from working with Chinese pharmaceuticals. Diabetes is a massive crisis that no one talks about. It's the eighth leading cause of death in the United States and killed 103,000 Americans in 2021. That's more than four times the number of all of the homicides in the US every year. But you never hear politicians talking about, we gotta get tough on diabetes. Worldwide, 422 million people are affected by the disease. Diabetes is caused by a deficiency of insulin, usually because a person's pancreas, the organ responsible for creating insulin, isn't producing enough. Until today, it had no known cure. But last month, a group of Chinese scientists published a report about how they use stem cells to treat a diabetes patient. They took the patient's blood cells and turned them into stem cells, which they used to regenerate the patient's pancreas. Stem cells are basically unassigned cells. Brain cells are the building blocks of the brain, skin cells are what make up your skin, but stem cells can become any kind of cell, and when you place them near other cells, they turn into that kind of cell and multiply. These scientists took the stem cells they made out of the patient's blood and used them to regenerate the patient's pancreatic tissue. The patient in the experiment, a 59-year-old man who had been living with type 2 diabetes for 25 years, had been taking multiple insulin shots daily, but just 11 weeks after receiving the stem cell transplant, he no longer needed any insulin injections, meaning he's effectively cured. This is a major breakthrough, and something the US has been trying to develop for some time now. The FDA approved for the first time cell therapy for diabetes patients, but the cells in this treatment come from dead people, and there aren't enough organ donors to treat everyone with diabetes. Point being, we should all be celebrating China's achievement, right? Right? Well, apparently not, because if you watch the mainstream media, you think we're supposed to hate China. In the last few years, China has become the world leader in a lot of things, like electric vehicle production, green energy, public transportation, AI. Other countries have begun turning to China as a mediator in diplomatic relations, a role traditionally filled by the US. In 2010, China's economy became the second largest in the world and is now on track to outgrow the US economy as soon as 2030. In other words, China is now powerful enough of a country that it threatens America's world superpower status, and America doesn't want to give that up. In an effort to dampen their growth, the US has launched an all-out assault on Chinese industry with sanctions and tariffs, it's encircled China with US military bases armed with long-range missiles zeroed in on Chinese shores, and one of its latest attacks is a bill called the Biosecure Act. This bipartisan bill would ban any US business that receives federal funds from working with four Chinese medical firms. One of the companies listed, a Chinese pharmaceutical manufacturer called Wu Shi, works with 19 of the 20 largest pharmaceutical manufacturers in the US. One of the companies Wu Shi works with, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, cured a patient of the far less common type 1 diabetes. And now they're scrambling to find alternative suppliers at the precise moment when you could have a collaboration that cures type 2 diabetes. When you think about the implications of all this, it really calls into question the fundamental nature of our government. You have hundreds of thousands of people suffering and dying from a now curable disease, and your own government is preventing you from working with the very country on the cutting edge of the cure and instead spends hundreds of billions of dollars to prepare to go to war with that country. The US has also been preventing the import of a Cuban miracle treatment for diabetic foot ulcers, which we reported on two years ago, a treatment that could have saved hundreds of thousands of people from having their body parts amputated. Instead, the US government continues to impose a 60-year blockade on Cuba, preventing medical collaboration almost entirely. This is a bipartisan... It's really mind-boggling when you think about it, but then again, these are the same people spending your tax dollars to blow up hospitals and murder Palestinian children. So I guess it really shouldn't come as that much of a surprise. Part of the reason for this is that the same way that all of the members of Congress that are so gung-ho about supporting Israel are actually taking money from Israel, the people in our government that are sanctioning Chinese medical institutions are taking millions of dollars in bribes from a for-profit medical industry that makes billions of dollars from treating, but not curing, diabetes. Insulin, like all medicine under capitalism, is a commodity that's bought and sold for profit. Up until recently, healthcare companies were marking up insulin treatments as much as 5,000 
A vial of insulin, which costs about $10 to make, would go for around $300 on the drug market. People were literally dying because they couldn't afford to buy enough insulin and tried rationing what little they could afford. This makes no sense if your goal is maximizing human well-being, but it makes perfect sense if your goal is maximizing profit. The pharmaceutical industry spends the most money lobbying Congress of any industry by far. In other countries, paying a member of the government to change the law on your behalf is called bribery, and it's illegal. In America, it's called lobbying, and there are rules and regulations that tell you exactly how to do it. The cost of US hostility towards China isn't just that our politicians are dragging us into a war of unbelievably catastrophic proportions. It's also the cost of everything we lose when we choose a policy of ruthless confrontation and delinking over mutually beneficial cooperation. Instead of sanctioning Chinese scientists, we could be developing cures for diabetes and cancer together. Instead of fear-mongering about the use of Chinese train cars in the US, China could help us build high-speed rail all across the country given that they have the most highly developed high-speed rail system in the world. In this highly technological age, when we could be coming together as a planet to apply science and technology to make disease, poverty, suffering, and war a thing of the past, the best our politicians and the capitalist system can come up with is war with China.